we are delivering messages. I'm sure I will never deliver messages, deliver messages which are not in line to what I think. I will never deliver a message that is saying buy more weapons or buy more furs. Hello everybody, here is Mario. Welcome to another episode of Design Interview 10 Questions where we try to generate and share good content for people, especially to make them feel the design world support. Um, so while everything is stopping, unfortunately, we talk about design. Today's guest is Massimo Pittis. He's an Italian graphic designer. He founded the Pittis Associate in 2007. It's a visual communication studio specialized in brand identities, editorial design, and digital design. Um, the studio is between Milan and Paris, and they, are, they have very important clients such as uh, Wired Italia, Armani, Cernale Milano, Cerruti, and many others. Um, during the years, they also won different awards for their works, like the Magazine of the Year with Wired. Um, Massimo is also a teacher in, the, in different universities around Italy and he was also my teacher actually so this why for me is a pleasure to welcome Massimo today so thank you to be here and welcome thank you thank you for inviting me um, as always we remember to the interview is that you are totally free to answer whatever you want so just feel free and if you don't mind, I would start with the first question, with the starting yeah. one. So what made you become a designer? Well, that's a very interesting question. Um, okay, tell me how much time we have, because I forgot about that. So, so there's so, no time limit. Okay, so, okay. so just wave your hand when you think it's... Uh, too long now because this is a one of those questions that can uh, go for like uh, a, a half an hour answer I will try to give it in a few minutes so what made me decide to start graphic design is probably a, a more narrow and focused question so I will reduce it to this I think I always I've always be, have a, an interest in uh, visual uh, communication and visual culture since I was a kid. And uh, I remember, and probably since you've been my student, I probably told you this already years ago. And when I, when I was a kid, I, I had this uh, uh, present from my, my parents that was uh, something that in, that in Italy is very popular. It's, it was very popular, actually, not for your generation which is the Manuale delle Giovani Marmotte. It was a Disney uh, little booklet uh, with a lot of uh, tips and games and other stuff. And one page, one spread was dedicated to uh, black letters. And it was like a, a brief lesson on how to draw black letters, uh, gotico as we call it in Italian. So I started from there also to have an interest in letters and to draw, draw them uh, and, and, and to do things with, with letters. And that was the, first, the very, very first time I remember I had an interest in lettering and type design. And calligraphy probably was the, the first interest. But then uh, I, my, my like scholar career, student career, was going in a completely different direction because when I finished my studies as an industrial designer, uh, but uh, mechanical, like uh, really not, not designer, uh, visual designer mostly, but the more technical designer, I decided to undertake a, a different uh, direction for my career and to study law. So I was, I went in the university to study law and I did it for three years until I was forced to come in Milan for my civil service. Uh, and uh, I decided to, to take uh, a course, a class in graphic design. And that was the real spark uh, that sparkled, that started me with, uh, to, uh, that made me understand 
what graphic design was. And from there on, I just didn't stop loving what I'm doing. Okay, so uh, you started with the Giovanni Marmotte, the Disney book, and then you also try, uh, I, I mean, your intention was to do low, and then you ended being a graphic designer. So I guess also since the beginning of your career as a graphic designer, the meaning of design for you changed. So what, what is then graphic design for you now, today? Uh, for me, graphic design is, uh, I, I, I like the most the word uh, uh, visual design because uh, graphic design is reducing things to to sign on a way that I, is probably limiting the, the, the field and the landscape of, of what I think it is my work today, which is dealing with visual design. Art direction is uh, something that uh, keeps together all the different fields of the visual communication. And I think that being able to deal with the translation, the visual translation of uh, information is what we do, and, and I think what you do as well. So it's uh, more than just uh, type design, it's more than type direction, is more the graphic de design, is a wall, like, like, a, 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 like a, a universe of visual uh, signs that we use for, for our work. And I think uh, it's, it's the best translation of what I do today is not even graphic design, but it's visual design. Yeah, so uh, the third question would be like, uh, what do you create as a designer? And I think more or less you already answered with the previous question. Yeah. Um, but so we can say that you deliver messages somehow. You translate this information yeah. into messages. Yeah, which I think is, is quite an interesting point because it 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 drives uh, it draws a line between uh, the artist work and the designer's work because if a designer is delivering a message that like ninety percent of the time is coming from somewhere else, so it's a client need or an institution need or. Uh, uh, a, a publishing house need uh, that you that you like uh, take as your job and 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 you help communicate uh, while an artist is communicating his own message. So I think that uh, what we do is to translate with our own with our own skills and ability and creativity, which is the artistic part. But a message that comes from somewhere else. So I think that what defines the work of a studio uh, compared to a work of another studio is uh, the sensibility to decide which are the messages that you feel more comfortable with. So uh, I think that uh, during the years, Mostly after 2007, you mentioned that the year when I started with this new studio, uh, I tried to define year by year the direction of this studio to go in a place to, to arrive to a point where I can uh, deliver messages that are very close to my sensitivity, sensibility. And uh, yeah, but I think you, you're right. The point is, uh, the point is, uh, we are delivering messages. I'm sure I will never deliver messages, deliver messages which are not in line to what I think. I will never deliver a message that is saying buy more weapons or buy more furs or um, uh, yeah, whatever. Like use. Uh, uh, nuclear energy, so things that are not in line with my ethics, but the rest, yes, is, is what I do. We said that you 
with your studio design very different kind of outcomes like branded entities, sometimes also posters or books and digital uh, stuff. Um, so the process that you use is always the same or you do something different every time? Are you like interested in a precise process every time or yeah. not? Okay, I think we do have a methodology. So the answer is uh, double faced because we do have a methodology, but in the same time, we adapt the methodology to the to the client or to the project. Sometimes the, these are the two elements that drive our choices and uh, redefine our methodology. So while the methodology is always starts from research, like a very open research made with uh, a very like open phase of brainstorming and uh, uh, really like creative openness. Uh, every time we, we find a way to adapt the rest of the process and the methodology to the, to the client. For instance, when I do a project of brand design, which now we are doing, and it's interesting because in these days, it's uh, also the methodology we use need to change because we are not, I, I, I give you a little example. Now we are doing a, a project of brand identity for a client and uh, and we were in a phase where we should have had a workshop together with the client. So there were like seven people involved in this in this workshop that should have been here in the studio. Of course, that is not possible, but that is a very fundamental part of the process. And so we decided to do it uh, online for the first time. And it took me like 10 days, like almost two weeks, to develop in a digital realm the, 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 that phase of the process. But now it worked. Yesterday we did it and it worked very well. Now we're thinking, oh, maybe we should do it more often and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I think that uh, to make the long story short, I think that, yes, we, we do have a methodology. When we do a book, when we do a, a magazine, when we do a project of brand identity, when we do a project of, let's say, like exhibition design, uh, we have different methodologies. But uh, I think that the methodology is secondary to the, the goal. So whatever it is, the methodology, we adapt it every time. It's really funny because for who doesn't know, uh, Massimo is also a close friend of Matteo Bologna. And yeah. he does workshops with the clients as well. And he told us in the first interview. So I think it's quite funny that we find the same uh, methodology somehow. Yeah. Um, by the way, yeah, sorry, please. I didn't talk about that with Matteo, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we, we, we think this, this, in this situation quite similarly. Um, during the years uh, you shaped um, your style and also I know because I mean, we, we know out of this interview each other but uh, that you always like look around you try new inspiration and you, you always try to update um, do you think now today you can get perfection in design do you think exists perfection in design Thanks God, not. Uh, there's no perfection in design, and and I think it's uh, that gives a lot of space to everyone to say their word in in, in graphic design and visual design, and uh, and I think I, I I never that's it that's another it, it this question make me think about another uh, idea. 
because when I, I used to, to teach also history of graphic design many, many years ago, before we met. And, uh, and uh, I remember uh, in some books, like, like the uh, book of history of graphic design, uh, the so-called Swiss design, it was is defined as a design made by people that were thinking that uh, a methodology could be adapted uh, to each and every project the same way, and also that uh, the set of rules could have been the same, which after studying in depth the real history of Swiss design, I discovered that that is, is not completely bullshit, but is like just a little part of the iceberg. And uh, it's the easy way to understand Swiss design. Anyway, there was also someone that was saying things like that in that era. But what I think is that there's no formula for graphic design. There's methodology. You can adapt different methodologies, but there's no formula. So since there's no formula, there's no perfection. I mean, you can also you only claim for perfection if you adapt to a formula in an orthodox way. But if not, who can say, oh, this is perfect or this is not? I'm not completely sure that beauty is in the eyes of the beholder because uh, this is not true. And I think another uh, interesting study that I had in, in graphic design when I started to fall completely in love with young Chikold I learned that uh, he said it said something quite interesting. He said, "No, it's not true that uh, that uh, beauty is out of judgment. That um, anybody can say this is beautiful, this is this is ugly, because there's something which is definitely ugly and something that is definitely beautiful." And he was talking about proportions and blah blah blah. But I think there is a line between what is good design and bad design. But having said that, there's good design that is not perfect. And the most, I think there's no perfect design. So there's a lot of good design around, a lot. A lot of good design that I would have never done and I will never do, which I don't even like, but I can say, yeah, it's good design. But uh, yeah, there's also a lot of bad design, but there's no perfect design around. And what do you think about contemporary design? Do you like it? Do you think it's too much? Or also because you you started uh, your career in a previous generation? Yeah, of, of course. Um, uh, it's very difficult to judge contemporary design because when you live in a in a in a in a place in a in a time. Uh, frame, it's very difficult to judge your time. Uh, you only understand something when, like, let's say, 20 or 30 years have passed. And I can say that uh, when I, I was there, when, uh, like, Ray Gunn was publishing his issues, and uh, Dan Friedman was doing his stuff, and and Crime Rock University started to 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 spread around the the new credo of the of the American graphic design, and and um, and Emigre was out, and we were starving to have a new copy by mail and so on. And now, now I'm doing this to say by mail. Can you believe that? At the time, it was by mail and uh, so I remember that from that time what it was to be a graphic designer between the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s but when I go back now and I look at that time from from now I can see quite a different uh, landscape and of course, there's been books like uh, Rick Poynor wrote a beautiful book about a couple of beautiful books about that so-called postmodern graphic design. But when you see it from now, you can from here, this this time frame and you look back, you can really understand what it was and what it benefit out of that. What, what was the effect of that? 
So what I can say about today is that design, visual design, became uh, is more diffuse, which is good because at the, at the end of the day, apart from our own, uh, let's say, profit, uh, we we as graphic design are happier when we see an environment where graphic design has a better exposition and there's more beautiful design and more beautiful communication around. And I think that, uh, yes, we have a better environment as graphic designers now, even in Italy, than 30 years ago. Having said that, I think that uh, we still struggle with uh, doing the step that Rick Pointer, I remember I, I did an interview to Rick Pointer in 1994, and, um, and of course I was in love with iMagazine, and I asked him what was the goal of iMagazine, and he said, I want iMagazine to be sold in with a very cheap price to everyone, that every family, I want that people start to, I mean, two ladies meet in a supermarket and start to argue about what is the best label on a, on a washing powder product. And I thought, wow, that's a great goal. It's like bringing graphic design to the, to the debate of everyone on a popular level. And I think that we are, I'm talking as an Italian, so I know that you can understand me. In Italy, we are quite far from that. People are not judging the quality of the communication, starting to look, or, or of a product, starting to look at the communication, the way they, the, 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 the designers are trying to engage with them or not. But of course, it's a matter of education, it's a matter of, of uh, the development of the, our visual culture. And I think that that is not a matter of designers as professionals, but is a matter of schools from the first grade to start in, include graphic design and visual design in the primary schools and start arguing and analyzing visual communication from that stage to create a popular base of people that can really judge and analyze and decide whether they agree or not with the communication on a visual base. Yeah, I think it's very interesting, this point of view, and brings me immediately to the next question that is, uh, what's your opinion about uh, design education? You are also a teacher and you, you were my teacher, so uh, I think for you it's very important education. I think that uh, in Italy, I I tell about Italy because uh, it's the, the area that I know the most in terms of uh, design education. Um, I know what they do in, in Britain, particularly in London, with a few schools like uh, St. Martin or Royal College of Art, and, um, and the quality uh, up there is incredible. The quality of the teaching, I think, the, and the programs. And I, what I love from there that I think we still miss in Italy in the in the public schools uh, is the connection between different disciplines. So from visual to fashion to uh, graphic uh, to photography. So students working together to create something. And I think we miss that. Having said that, I think that uh, at the moment, uh, after 20 years, from the first uh, proper class of design in university that was in Polytechnico at the end of the 90s. So it's almost 20 years that they started there. I think that uh, the, the quality of the, of the schools is very high in Italy. I think it's, the standard is, is very good. And it's not a surprise that a lot of international students come from all over the world to Milan or to, or to other cities in Italy, to Turin, to or Venezia, as you mentioned, to learn about uh, design and graphic design, but also product and, 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 and um, exhibition design and uh, all the disciplines. 
and architecture, of course. And I think that, uh, yes, we, we, in Italy, we have uh, quite a high standard. And in general, in the world, teaching design became a more open field than at the beginning, because at the beginning, we just, as teachers or the university, just mimic the, the, the University of Architecture and not always in the, in the right way. But uh, nowadays, I think that there's uh, proper programs and, and good methodologies, and particularly in the workshop, which are, uh, I think, the most uh, lively areas where teaching design uh, happens. One, one uh, important influence, for sure, in the education, uh, talking for students, is uh, the impact that internet had on people and especially then in design because a student now uh, is he doesn't have only to buy books but also to uh, he can just open instagram and see every studio now do you think um the impact of internet had on design uh, was good or you are on the other side which is, I think, internet uh, just brought a lot of garbage. I think that uh, I think that when you uh, uh, there's there's a once uh, uh, one of my Buddhist ma masters said to me, when you start cleaning the house, the first thing that you see is dust, and I think that applies very well to what uh, we see since the beginning of internet and, and social media. And I go back to what happened in the so-called uh, democratization of uh, graphic design. That was what uh, has, has been named the, the, the moment where uh, people like Rudy Vanderland and Susanne Lichko or others like uh, 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 Je uh, yeah, Jeffrey Keady or others started to use the computers to redesign letters and do type design on a digital area. And they said, uh, yes, uh, now the computers will create a, a more democratic field. And in that field, everybody can uh, design his own uh, typeface and do his own uh, things even without education you don't need a, an art education to be able to use a computer and to generate fonts and of course in that moment we saw a lot of dust the world if you go back and see what uh, graphic design was and visual design was in the late 80s and the beginning of the 90s there were there were astonishing ideas and beautiful creative processes going on, but also a lot of garbage. And that's the part, the beauty of it. When you start a revolution, there's blood. When you start cleaning the house, there's dust. And it's part, it's the part of the process. So I think the first website I saw, and I was there in 1996 or seven, the first website we designed was like, really, I would say, ingenuous, I, I don't know how, how to translate that, but uh, ingenuous, I don't know. Anyway, so poor and, and, and rough and uh, not, not super beautiful, but that was important because in the process we learned a lot uh, about how to do things better. So, I think that uh, starting to judge technology as a problem, it's proved to be a wrong decision because you can't judge and say, oh, technology is bringing garbage nowadays. Of course, of course, it, we need to see a lot of garbage when we see rules changing. And, uh, but at the end, that will help people try new things, open new boundaries and go further on some fields and create something new. There's nothing new that comes without mistakes.
Uh, regarding to look uh, further and in the future, um, do you think the role of the designer will have a different, uh, let's sorry, role? I mean, the designer will have a different role in the future or will be the same? Because in the previous interviews uh, came out the topic that today, and you also said it before, that 90% of your work comes from a client. So there is a 10% that the designer is not just the, the translator of the information, as you said, but is also the generator and curator of the content. Yeah. So do you think the designer role can change? Uh, the designer role already changed and we are already in the future. I say that because I don't know about the next step, but I'm living now in, a, in, a, in an era where things have changed so much, giving in the putting in the hands of the designer a lot of strategical decisions. And I started to say this uh, 15 years ago, also in schools. I think that the lack of uh, culture and, uh, and uh, information and, and, and knowledge that uh, a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of people around have is giving in the hands of the translator a lot of power. Uh, translating is a powerful uh, job. When you, when you translate Tennessee Williams in Italian, you have an incredible power and an, an incredible responsibility. Um, responsibility and power are strongly connected. And we we started to read uh, Jack Kerouac in Italian through the translation of uh, Cesare Pavese, who was a fantastic writer in Italian already, very well known, but uh, didn't actually translate uh, uh, like Henry Miller or, 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 or Kerouac, literally. He put something of his, um, himself. And I think designers do the same. Designers put something of themselves. And since we are not so lucky to have Kerouac, Henry Miller, or Tennessee Williams as, uh, like, let's say, the, the message that we deliver, sometimes we have to do more as translators to add value and quality to what we translate. So that means great responsibility and a great power. And I think that we should be very aware. That's why I spent so much time, and you can uh, witness that. You witnessed that when you were a student to tell to the students that is so important to go deeper in your journey uh, to understand the world and 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 deepen your knowledge of uh, the culture you live in, because that will give you the ability to deal with those two things, responsibility and power, in the right way. Yeah, so you use two important words, so like responsibility and power. Um, do you think today, in this unfortunate moment of this global pandemic, we have a responsibility to do something as designers? And if yes, do we have power in the world to do something? Uh, first of all, before graphic designers or designers or visual designers are direct art directors, we are human being. And I think that as human being, we have a big responsibility and a, and, and a big power. Uh, to make the change in our small communities, starting from ourselves as, per, as people, as persons, and uh, our family, our the group of friends, and the little community we live in. If we, I do believe that. I, I think that 
if we make the change in our little community, and we all do that, as human beings before that, as designers, we, we can really change the world in a different direction. I think this moment is a great opportunity, and I'm not saying this because it's nice to say it. It's really a great opportunity to start thinking again the way we live in. The, because it's not just uh, something that happened to the world, this virus. It's something that is part of the way we live. So the, 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 also the, the speed in which this uh, virus started to spread all around the world is very consistent to the way we live. We, we move much faster, much quicker, much more often than, than in the past. So it's the, our way to think about the world and way to think about the, uh, the life we're living now, which is at stake. And I think it's a great opportunity, if we use it in the right way, to start thinking about, yes, what, what will I do next? What will I do after this is finished? Because if, my, if our goal is to do exactly the same and live exactly in the same way we, start, we, we used to live only one or two months ago, I think that we missed a chance and missed an opportunity which is there for us. Uh, I, I strongly believe that nothing happens by chance. So if this happened in this moment, we should use this moment to understand something of ourselves. So as visual designers, yes, we do have a chance to, to put our ability in, in, uh, in play in the way we think is more relevant for the people that lives around us. So what you did is starting to spread some some of your uh, abilities and also to ask uh, some designers to give you some uh, some uh, insight and, and ideas to talk about. And this is your way. I think that if everybody finds his little piece of mind and start to spread that idea to the world, that's already something important. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Massimo, for your time. It was thank nice for... to talk to you and see you uh, again after a long time. Okay. So okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.